live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. The year is 1985, and one of the best teams in all of college football is this team right here, the Tennessee Volunteers. Led by the legendary head coach Johnny Majors, they finished the season with a 9-1-2 record. They won the SEC, and they ended the year by defeating Miami in the Sugar Bowl. Tennessee ended the season on a six-game winning streak, winning their final three games by a combined score of 107-7, and ended the year as the number four ranked team in the nation, even receiving a first place vote in the AP poll. It was their highest finish in the poll since 1970, and was their first time ending the season ranked since all the way back in 1974. College football could not get enough of Rocky Top, and could not get enough of Tennessee during the 1985 season, as thanks to the fifth best defense in the nation, they truly were one of the most feared teams in the land. And then, there's this team right here, the New Mexico Lobos. Everything that Tennessee was, New Mexico was not. Because while Tennessee was one of the best teams in all of college football, New Mexico was, well, they were not one of the best teams. In fact, they were one of the worst. They ended the season with a 3-8 record, going 2-6 in conference play. They had a five-game losing streak at one point, and when they got a chance to play ranked opponents, they got thoroughly outclassed, as in three games against ranked competition, they went 0-3 and got outscored 132-42, getting outscored by an average of 30 points per game. For New Mexico, it was their worst season since they went 3-8 back in 1972, and was tied for their worst record since 1968, which was their first season under head coach Rudy Feldman. It was also another season where they didn't go bowling, with the drought being extended another year since their appearance in the Aviation Bowl back in 1961. So when I say that Tennessee and New Mexico were meeting to start off the 1986 season, with Tennessee being the big name that they are and coming off of one of their best seasons in program history, and with New Mexico being the small school that they are and coming off of one of their worst, you would think that this game would be in Knoxville, right? you think that this would be another one of those guarantee games, where Tennessee pays New Mexico money so that the Volunteers can play the Lobos in a de facto preseason game, and New Mexico walks away with a ton of money in the process that they can use to help fund other things with their football team and their athletic department. And if that was the case, then this would be a non-story. Guarantee games happen all the time, and there's nothing inherently weird about Tennessee playing New Mexico. Except for the fact that to open up the 1986 season, this game was set to be played not in Tennessee, but rather in New Mexico. That's right. To open up the 1986 season, Tennessee was going to travel to New Mexico and play at the small, inadequate University Stadium in what was set to be an absolutely bizarre way to kick off the new year. As for how this turned out in the end, well, the ending might be more bizarre than the premise. Because this is the story behind the strangest home game in New Mexico history. And depending on how you want to look at it, Tennessee history. John Bridgers was the athletic director at New Mexico. And he had a rather bizarre method of scheduling games for his football team. Under no circumstances, none whatsoever, would he schedule anything that wasn't a home and home. If the opposing team didn't want to come back to Albuquerque and play in New Mexico, then there would be no game. Any contracts that were previously signed before Bridgers became the AD were honored, which is why you had situations like New Mexico playing at Nebraska in 1985, even though the Cornhuskers were never going to play in New Mexico, and New Mexico playing at Texas in 1988, even though the Longhorns were never going to return the favor. But as long as Bridgers had something to say about it, it was home and home, or it was nothing. And in 1980, Bridgers got an absolutely major deal, and somehow got a home-and-home -home series scheduled against none other than the University of Tennessee. The two schools had never played each other before, but under the agreement, the Lobos would travel to Knoxville in 1983, and then the Vols would return the favor and travel out west in 1986. There was a ton of excitement surrounding this home-and-home, with then-head coach Joe Morrison saying, I'm looking forward to it. If we're going to improve our program and move along, we have to play teams of that caliber. 
it's a good series for our football team and for the people of Albuquerque. Per the agreement, New Mexico would pay Tennessee $150,000 for the return leg in 1986. And with that, somehow, the Home and Home series was on. As you've been watching the whole time, the 1983 meeting was no contest. When Tennessee and New Mexico played each other for the first time ever at Newland Stadium, the Vols won handily, taking it by a final score of 31-6. It wasn't really a surprise, seeing as New Mexico was a 500 team under new leadership following Joe Morrison's departure as head coach to take the job at South Carolina. And Tennessee was a nine-win team that ended the year as Citrus Bowl champions. Roughly 90,000 fans saw this bloodbath go exactly as expected, and saw New Mexico's offense struggle all day, not scoring until midway through the fourth quarter when the backups were in. But for athletic director John Bridgers, this was never about the 1983 leg, where New Mexico was getting money from Tennessee to come there. This was all about three years later, in 1986, when Tennessee would come to New Mexico in what was by far the biggest opponent that the Lobos had ever faced at home. However, when you're watching the highlights of this 1986 lag, and when you're looking at the box score and all that, you'll notice quite clearly that this game is not taking place in New Mexico. Instead, the game is taking place in Tennessee, which raises the obvious question. Why? What the heck happened? A lot. A lot of stuff happened, and that's putting it lightly. Because there was a major problem when the series was scheduled, and that was the fact that University Stadium where New Mexico played was not an adequate facility by any means. The stadium was showing its age, lacked basic amenities, and was nowhere near big enough to properly host a school like Tennessee, as the Lobos were leaving thousands upon thousands of dollars in revenue on the table with the way the stadium was set up. Even in 1980, when this series was announced, Richards made it clear that he was doing this with the intention of upgrading University Stadium to bring it up to the standards that he desired. And the message was clear. If University Stadium did not receive significant and substantial upgrades before the 1986 game, then there was no way that Tennessee was going to return the favor and play New Mexico's part of the home and home. With that, in November of 1985, Plans were officially put in motion by Bridgers to upgrade the stadium. It was a $7 million renovation broken up into two phases, with Phase 1, if all went according to plan, being a $2 million phase set to start construction in February and being ready for that opener in 1986. That phase included removing the running track that circled the playing field, adding 10 rows of seats around the existing structure to make the stadium capacity a modest 34,000, installing turf, and adding restroom and concession facilities. Now you might be wondering why on earth, if they knew about this game for over six years, that they waited until November of 1985, roughly 10 months before the biggest home game in school history, to announce this. Valid question. Well, Bridgers said that it just wasn't possible. As Bridgers said, this is as soon as we could do it. This is absolutely the first opportunity we had. Every year we wait and every year we put it off and get further behind. We need to start catching up rather than getting further behind. We had the budget problems, and that kind of delayed things. Then I guess the fact that football season hasn't gone as well as I had hoped delayed things too. Remember, this expansion and renovation was absolutely imperative. No expansion and renovation, no Tennessee game in 1986. And this plan was received incredibly poorly, as in, laughably bad. First off, I'm not sure where that $2 million figure comes from, because that comes out to just under $5.5 million today. And when you consider everything that New Mexico was going to do in that plan, from lowering an entire football field to replacing the field and adding turf, which alone is somewhere in the ballpark of $1.5 million in today's money, to adding seats on every side of the stadium, to building restrooms and concession stands, and reworking all the electricity and plumbing and whatnot, I have no idea how this was going to be kept on budget without going over. And apparently, a lot of people thought the same thing, especially since Phase 2 would begin after the 1986 season and would cost more than two and a half times the price of Phase 1. There was bipartisan disdain toward the bill, with Democrat Jerry Sandals saying that money for capital projects is hard to come by, 
While Republican Jack Morgan said that the timing was so bad for this request, considering the fact that New Mexico, among other things, had a deficit of over $800,000 in the athletic department. Heck, even the head coach of the team, Joe Lee Dunn, did not show up to the meeting where this was officially announced. Although that's a story for another time. And while Bridgers was trying to raise the $2 million necessary to improve the stadium, securing 17 commitments of $25,000, that still only got him to $425,000. The Board of Regents rejected the expansion. And just like that, the game in New Mexico was off. Partly because Tennessee wouldn't play at a stadium that poorly kept. And partly because New Mexico, with everything that was going on, didn't have $150,000 to give to Tennessee to get them to come here. Bridgers was disappointed, saying that this was something that the school and the program badly needed. But as board director Ann Jordan said, I don't think this is the time for the university to borrow money. And as Regent John Paez said, there are other problems that need to be addressed. We have an $800,000 deficit that is a big problem. We can't consider expansion on the stadium until this problem is addressed. So this was dead in the water, at least for now. At the very least, there would be no game in New Mexico in 1986. But if Bridgers was so adamantly against playing schools without a return trip back to Albuquerque, why did New Mexico, as you've been watching for the past few minutes, travel to Knoxville in 1986? Well, that's because New Mexico made out like absolute bandits. Again, Bridgers hated the idea of traveling back to Knoxville so much that he rejected Tennessee's offer of $300,000 to play the 1986 game there. But when Tennessee upped the ante again, making it the highest paid guarantee game of all time for the Volunteers at the time, everyone's got a price point. And Tennessee wound up offering New Mexico a whopping $421,000, which could go up even more if TV picked up the game. In today's money, that's well over $1.1 million. Instead of New Mexico paying Tennessee $150,000, Tennessee would be paying New Mexico $421,000. And at that point, while Bridgers was definitely stubborn, he wasn't stupid. As he said, nobody wanted to play that game here in Albuquerque more than I did. There's just no way I could recommend that we turn this down. And as Greg Remington, the Assistant Sports Information Director for New Mexico, said on this, Considering that we were going to have to pay them $150,000 to come here, that's a $571,000 difference. It's something we can't refuse. Today, when you look at Tennessee's schedule from the 1986 season and see that they hosted New Mexico, which was the last time that they ever played the Lobos, nothing about it seems out of the ordinary. Tennessee, as expected, won the game. Although this time, it was a lot closer than people probably expected as Tennessee won 35-21 in a game that was still in the balance in the fourth quarter. Tennessee hosted the game, which made it look just like every other guarantee game that the Vols have had over their program's history. In other words, nothing seems unusual, and this is just a footnote in the history of both of these schools. But if you knew the inner workings of what it took to get that game in Knoxville in the first place, it was anything but that. Because in 1986, it was a rocky road for New Mexico to prepare for their game against Rocky Top. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.